Today we're going to look at economy and finance vocabulary. So let's have a look first of all in this corner. Um, house prices or interest rates or the value of your currency, whether it's rubles or pounds or dollars. Um, now these three things, they can obviously go down. Yeah, they can go down or they can go up. So if house prices go down, we can also say a number of other expressions. We can say house prices drop, house prices fall. We could say interest rates plummeted. Now plummet means fall very, very quickly. I want to make that clear that plummet is a very sharp decrease in the price of something. So when it plummets, it drops. When you jump out of an airplane, your body will plummet to the ground if you don't have a parachute. And so that's the kind of idea behind plummet, fall very quickly. Um, you can also say house prices have slumped or you can say there has been a slump in house prices. You can also say a drop in house prices, a fall in house prices, but you can't say a plummet in house prices, okay? So that's a little bit different. It's a verb. You don't use it as a noun, but these other ones you do. Um, and you can also say house prices have collapsed. Um, we don't generally say a collapse in house prices, but perhaps in some areas you may find it but I think we usually use this one as a verb too and of course interest rates can collapse and the value of your currency can collapse as well so they're all about going down now I wrote three here for going up um, interest rates can rise the value of your currency can increase and house prices can skyrocket and skyrocket would be the opposite of plummet in that it means go up very 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 quickly um, okay, so use those for describing trends in prices. There's more information about this on a video which I made for IELTS, IELTS Writing. So if you can find that video, just type in IELTS Writing, Mr. Skype Lessons. I think you'll find it, I hope so, and you'll get more vocabulary for this uh, description. Um, coming now on to the word debt. You can cancel your debts, you can pay off your debts, you can incur debts and you can alleviate debts. And these words here are adjectives. You can incur crippling debts. Crippling means terrible, um, awful debts. So They're so bad, these debts, that they cripple you. Now remember, cripple, a cripple is... Um, it's perhaps not politically correct now, but it was a word for an invalid, uh, someone who was disabled, was crippled. Maybe they crippled their leg or they crippled their arm. And so crippling debt means you're unable to function. Um, it's incapacitating debt. It stops you from functioning uh, normally. So that's a very severe form of debt, severe debt, crippling debt. Mounting debts means increasing debts and substantial means significant debts, big debts. But mounting means they keep adding up, they keep going up. So if you cancel your debts, you wipe them out. Uh, um, well, you obviously don't choose to cancel your debt. Maybe the bank decides to wipe out your debts because you declare yourself bankrupt. Yeah, perhaps you declare yourself bankrupt. It's another good word to remember for this topic, actually, bankrupt. And remember, you go bankrupt. If you go bankrupt, maybe the bank will decide to wipe out your debts because you're unable to pay them. Um, OK, maybe you manage to pay off your debts. Maybe you settle your crippling debts oh, and then you breathe a sigh of relief. Um, but yeah, pay off your debts. Incur just means get debts. Go into debt is another expression. Go into debt. Yeah, just like you go into recession, you go into debt. And so if you incur debts, when I was a student, I incurred debts. I ran up uh, some debts, some mounting debts, which was my student loan. So there is a phrasal verb you can use here. You run up debts, which just means get debts, incur debts. And so a lot of us run up debts um, while we're at university, but many of us run up debts also if we go into business uh, for starting capital, that kind of thing. Um, you can also alleviate debts. This is where you help someone ease their debts. You help to make it easier for them to pay. Maybe you lend them some money or maybe you alleviate someone's debt from by, if you're the bank, 
reducing the amount the person has to pay. Maybe you alleviate the debt by accepting a much lower amount. So that would always also be debt alleviation. If a country is in debt, other countries may wish to help and they may choose to alleviate the country's debt. Um, okay, coming over here, um, you can raise interest rates or you can lower interest rate rates, which means put them down or put them up. So it's not go down and go up, it's put up and put down. Remember, raise is different from rise. They are, they are different verbs. Rise is when, you know, you say the sea level is rising. But you, you raise is when there's an agent involved, yeah? Raise is when you say, I don't know, um the um maybe the weather is causing uh, is is make, making sea levels rise so it's raising the sea level yeah it's not a very good example let me think of a different example maybe your boss raises your salary that means your salary rises your salary goes up your salary rises but your boss raises your salary okay but he could also lower your salary and you can lower interest rates now i've written base interest rate because base interest rate means the central bank interest rate and so it's very important in economics what the base interest rate is set at if the central bank sets the interest rate very low like at the moment it means money is very cheap money is very easy to borrow um, and so a lot of money has to be printed um, you can also go into recession and come out of recession recession is a period of difficulty for the economy it's when the economy shrinks and that's a good word to remember for the economy the economy can shrink get smaller yeah sh you, your clothes shrink if you put them in the wash sometimes hopefully not but the economy can shrink and then you're in a severe recession hopefully you come out of the severe recession and to do so you may need to introduce some new laws you may need to bring in some fiscal measures fiscal really is similar to financial as an adjective and here we just mean introduce some new laws relating to the economy so you might wish to boost economic growth you may bring in new measures to boost economic growth you may bring in these measures to curb which means limit remember the curb limits the side of the road and so curb means limit to curb rampant inflation rampant collocates well with inflation and it means out of control inflation it means when uh, it, by the way inflation is when house prices uh, sorry it's when prices skyrocket this is inflation when the price of everything skyrockets and so if you wish to limit prices and make sure they don't go up too much you want to curb inflation the opposite would be deflation which is when prices plummet um, so you may bring in new fiscal measures to prevent deflation maybe you decide to raise the base interest rates to prevent deflation okay that would probably be one fiscal measure you could introduce you could bring in okay um, you may decide to impose taxes you can also say levy taxes um, whether that's income taxes or something else that would be obviously the government's decision or the um, the uh, Ministry of Finance of Economics um, so you may want to allocate funds or allocate resources from the budget to certain areas allocate means push you know put certain funds or resources into certain areas so you may want to allocate funds to deal with abject poverty in certain areas of the country maybe there's really bad poverty abject means really severe poverty um, you might want to deal with that poverty by allocating funds to that area and spending some money in that area the problem may be different though the problem may be people not declaring their earnings there may be a big black economy in the country and um, this would be because people are not declaring their earnings. This is a form of tax evasion. Uh, if, you're if you don't declare what you earn, then you're trying to avoid tax. And this is called tax evasion. Um, you may decide to impose austerity measures, which is what we hear a lot about in the newspapers at the moment. Imposing austerity measures simply means... Um, <laughs> trying to cut down on your on the amount of money you spend um, so if you spend perhaps 
two million a year on defense and you impose austerity measures on the defense industry you spend less on that industry um, so austerity is always spending less in some kind of way and usually they impose austerity measures on public services um, this is usually the first thing to uh, be um, reduced the amount of money can be reduced okay uh, lastly phrasal verbs almost forgot them um, turnover has a couple of meanings and here it's really a noun I think we usually use it for revenue as a noun um, it if you talk about the company's turnover then it means their total revenue in other words total sales however it doesn't have to mean that because turnover has at least two meanings probably more it can also mean the rate at which you need to employ new staff staff turnover will always be uh, referring to this how quickly you you need to replace your new staff so if you have a very high staff turnover that means people leave your company very quickly maybe after only a few months or a year and you need to work out how to retain your staff how, how to encourage staff loyalty okay another word which is very common nowadays bailout um, bailout is when uh, it's used now very often when um, for example, the government bails out a bank. It means the government gives the bank um, money or a loan or something like this in order to save that institution. So a bailout is financial support um, in order to save you from going bankrupt, basically. Um, so countries can get bailouts if they're particularly if they've gone into um, severe debt they may need to ask the European Union or the United Nations or International Bank whatever for a bailout which would be a loan don't forget a loan is some form of credit um, now here are some other phrasal verbs which a lot of these are on my phrasal verbs with money video please check that video for more phrasal verbs with money but you can cough up money now this means pay reluctantly you cough up money when you don't want to pay it yeah um, and so maybe somebody owes you some money maybe somebody one of your friends owes you 20 pounds and they've been trying to avoid you and finally you see them and you say come on cough up that 20 pounds it means pay up <laughs> yeah pay up would be another one pay up pay me pay up that 20 pounds yeah cough up and it's related obviously to <coughs> It kind of makes me think of a person coughing up the money out of their throat. Maybe that'll be easier to remember. Now, you've also got fork out on, which is also pay reluctantly. When you fork out on an expensive car, it means you buy some expensive car and it wasn't um, very nice for you to, let, to part with that money because it was a lot of money. So you fork out on a new car. Um, splash out so this one sounds like pay and it sounds like you didn't enjoy paying for it this one is pay but you did enjoy paying for it you splash out on a new holiday and you know in both situations you're spending a lot of money but fork out on sounds like you didn't like spending that money although you may want the holiday you didn't enjoy you know being separated from your cash so a greedy person will usually fork out on something but a generous person or an extravagant person will usually splash out on a new swimming pool or a new car or a new holiday okay the last one which we'll do it means cost yeah i can't make it any clearer this one means cost so if i say how much did your new t tv whoops <laughs> how much did your new tv or your new computer set you back it means how much did you pay for it how much did it cost but we say set you back how much did it set you back um, and you can say it set me back 500 pounds it set me back 50 pounds Okay, I hope that's all clear. That's um, quite a lot of new vocab. So please ask me any questions under the video and I hope to see you all soon. Thanks for watching.